Welcome to Module 5 of the Experiential Education Series. Um, in this particular module, we're going to discuss the strategies of the uh, teams that will be involved in the country uh, competition. And make no mistake, uh, countries compete with each other constantly, just like companies compete with each other constantly. So, uh, your job uh, as part of your uh, country um, exercise is to um, compete with the other countries and get markets uh, first before the other countries can get them before you. And uh, to that end, we're going to discuss individual country strategies as it pertains to your team. Let's begin with uh, team number one, or China, and uh, some of the obvious advantages of team one China is that they have low production costs in the country. Um, they have the largest population in the world, so consequently they have the lowest cost production for factories in the world, which is why over 300 or 400 companies are doing business in China because they can produce their goods at a cheaper price than any other place in the world. Uh, no one can match the production cost of China. Um, now, a country like India comes close, but uh, China is still number one. Uh, so when you're going to do your uh, uh, team competition uh, PowerPoint presentation and your video, uh, you're going to concentrate on the low production costs of uh, Chinese workers and companies. Um, that would be the major strategy for China. Uh, let's move on to uh, team number two. Team number two uh, would be the United States. And the strength of the United States right now in trade and multinational positioning is in tech. Uh, you're going to highlight tech and Silicon Valley as your strengths because no one in the world can match the United States in tech and Silicon Valley. There are no uh, major competitors in that area. So that's where you're going to uh, uh, identify your strengths and uh, that's where you're going to uh, try and take over as many markets as you possibly can. Uh, moving on to Team 3. Um, Team three could be any number of countries. Let's say that team three is uh, Russia. And uh, in Russia, uh, your strengths are uh, three things. Uh, you have oil, gas, and natural resources in Siberia. You're going to highlight those three things in your presentation. Uh, remember, when you do your PowerPoint presentation and your video, you have to include things like the flag, the leader of the country, and a map. But uh, most importantly, you have to highlight the products that are going to sell your country, the ones that are going to make the most money for your country. Um, moving on to uh, number four, uh, let's do uh, Germany. And Germany uh, is engineering. The, uh, po the uh, most powerful uh, element of the German economy is mechanical engineering. They have the best cars in the world. And uh, I would highlight their car industry as being the most important element of their economy and also the most important uh, element of their um, uh, trade agreements uh, with other countries. So when you do Germany, you want to concentrate on car production. Um, moving on to country number five, let's say country number five is Italy. Uh, you would have uh, a concentration of Italy's bullet trains that go from the northern part of Italy near Florence to Germany in two hours. So uh, this is a major uh, attraction for countries like China who want to trade with Germany. Uh, they don't have to tro they don't have to go overland. They can go. They can uh, take their ships to Italian ports in northern Italy, and then load all of their cargo onto. Italian bullet trains, which go directly to Germany in two hours. So uh, they can conduct major uh, tonnage in amount of uh, two or three days and then take, uh, get shipping back from Germany, maybe luxury cars, and take that material and put it onto their boats. And uh, they can be out of there in three or four days, which is very cost effective. 
Um, so you're going to highlight um, the uh, Italian bullet trains if you're Italy. Um, let's say we move on to uh, team uh, six. Uh, team six, let's say we do Singapore. Singapore is the uh, Switzerland of Asia. Uh, they have major banking and insurance systems. Um, they have uh, the largest oil refinery in Asia. So that if the Chinese ships returning back from the Middle East have uh, millions of barrels of oil, they might want to uh, put some of them uh, in a storage unit in Singapore and get the oil refined there instead of coming back all the way to the Chinese mainland. Uh, that's just an option for Chinese traders uh, in the Belt and Road Initiative. But uh, in addition to uh, uh, these uh, storage units and the ability to convert um, uh, oil, uh, Singapore has, um, and in addition to their insurance and banking uh, industries, uh, Singapore has a central location in Asia. They are near everybody. They are the center of attraction in Asia. Everything goes through Singapore. Everything goes, you know, to Southeast Asia, to, to China, to Australia, to Japan, to Korea. And it's just a, uh, a simple matter for Singapore to get involved with all of those corridors. They just happen to be highly favorably located. Location, 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 and Singapore has it. So, uh, Put that on a couple of maps into your presentation and show how um, uh, beneficial it would be to do trading with Singapore. Um, moving to uh, country number seven, uh, let's uh, discuss uh, France. France has uh, AXA, which is the largest insurance company in the world, but they will be in competition with um, team number eight, England, UK, uh, but we'll go We'll go over that when we get to UK. Um, uh, France has a, a good location next to Africa, northern Africa. They're only miles away from northern Africa, so they can do a lot of trade with the northern African countries uh, if they get involved with the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, the AXA insurance company is a major uh, attraction as well because it's larger than the UK's uh, Prudential company, but Prudential also has a few aces up their sleeve, which we'll discuss when we do uh, UK. Uh, as we go to Team 8, we go to UK, and we're going to discuss their advantages, and the advantages of the UK, even though they're far away from um, the uh, Chinese Belt and Road corridors, they have a long history in Hong Kong. And uh, they have 300 branches of Hong Kong Savings Bank of China. Uh, they're all over China. They're all over Hong Kong. And Chinese businessmen will be doing their banking with Hong Kong Savings Bank of China because there's so many branches and they're approved by the Chinese government. Um, you'll find that uh, if you're going to be doing business with the Hong Kong Savings Bank of China, that's an English company. It's not a Chinese company. They're doesn't belong to Hong Kong, it uh, doesn't belong to China, it belongs to England. So you're already doing your banking with England, you might as well do your insurance with England with Prudential, which is partnered with Hong Kong Savings Bank of China, and you can do your banking and insurance all at one place, and the Chinese business, businessmen will be attracted to that particular combination. This will be a difficult combination to overcome for France, the country number seven. Uh, other countries that may or may not be involved in the uh, Belt and Road Initiative or China, I mean, not China, uh, Canada, uh, Switzerland, uh, possibly uh, Vietnam, uh, the Philippines, Korea, and Japan. Uh, let's discuss Japan in more detail uh, as team number nine. Uh, Japan has uh, many things going for it and uh, actually they have an industry that very few people know about that they are number one in the world and that is uh, photo uh, microchips and the photo microchips that the uh, Japanese have are in every iPhone in the world in fact they're in every phone in the world if you have anything uh, superior in your phones uh, for photography it comes from Japan they're the uh, the uh, 
makers of the microchips for photos, which means they have a tremendous market for Apple and all other phones, uh, Samsung and Korea and other places like that. So <clears throat> uh, the Japanese, uh, if, they're, if you're going to utilize Japan as your trading country, uh, you want to definitely emphasize their uh, photo microchips because they are number one in the world in that area. They're also uh, very good in um, animation. They're good in uh, other areas as well. So each team will have to identify these areas and highlight them, and you'll be in competition with everybody else. So uh, in our next module, uh, module six, we we'll discuss how your um, presentations will be evaluated. Uh, so tune in for t module six, and uh, we'll discuss those issues next time. This is Professor Tefero saying I'll see you next time and stay healthy. Take care. Bye-bye.